Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Beige. If you are new here, welcome. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below before you leave. So today I want to answer some of the questions that I've been getting since posting my scalp micropigmentation video. So I'll just go over the frequently asked questions and hopefully I can answer some of the concerns or questions that you guys have. So scalp micropigmentation is something new that is on the market. I guess it's been around for a couple of years now, but it's pretty new to me. I did have my procedure done about two weeks ago and it's healing pretty nicely. I wanna say that it is 100% healed now. I will show you guys some before and after pictures, but this is pretty much the update um, of how my scalp is looking, how my hair is looking. Today was the first time that I did go ahead and do my normal hairstyling on my scalp since I've gotten the procedure done. Scalp micropigmentation is also called SMP and it is a cheaper alternative to getting a hair transplant plant. Um, so with me, I had some thinning temples and I just wanted my hair to appear fuller when I do my ponytails, when I do my cornrows. I just wanted to give the illusion of fuller hair. I'm dealing with hair loss in these two areas specifically, but it's more so on this side than, is, than it is on this side. And basically scalp micropigmentation implants colored pigment onto your scalp that kind of mimics natural looking hair and it mimics a fuller looking scalp. Scalp micropigmentation ranges from $300 on up to like 10,000, depending on where you are, who's doing it, if they're certified or not, and how much of your scalp you need covered. A lot of people do need more than one session when you have it done. I only have one session and I think that one session is good for me, but if I did want to darken the lighter areas of my hair, I do have the option of going back for another session or two. I think I'm fine with how it looks so far. One thing that I was really concerned about when I did get the procedure done was getting braids in the future or how I would do my baby hairs because there are not that many videos on YouTube or on the internet in general about women, especially women of color, um, having this procedure done. So I was a little concerned. I had a lot of questions. And basically, I can still do my baby hairs. I can still do parts within my hair and it's not that noticeable. I am 100% satisfied with my results so far. I will not be going for a second or third treatment it was extremely painful. If you've not seen the video vlog that I did, I will have the link down below or somewhere on the screen for you to click on. It is basically a go with me and have this done and stay with me for the next couple of days after the surgery for the healing process. It wasn't a surgery, it was a procedure, but um, yeah, I don't feel like I would need two or three treatments total, but depending on each case, everyone is different. So. Yes, so far so good for me though. All right, so jumping right into the Q&A. Will I have more than one session done? So no, I feel like one session is enough for me. However, in the future, if I do feel like the scalp pigmentation is fading for whatever reason, I can go ahead and get a touch up. Was the scalp micropigmentation painful? To me it was, yes, but everyone's pain tolerance level is different. I do 100% recommend if you're getting this procedure done that you take Motrin, Advil, Tylenol, something like that for you to, for it to help you with your pain. And I feel like you should take it an hour before your session just so that you're good and it can kick in as your procedure is being done. The woman who did my scalp micropigmentation, she did numb my scalp beforehand, but it was still extremely painful. Um, I want to say about 10 minutes into the procedure, it was really, 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 <laughs> really, 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 really hurting. And she did stop in between just to check on me, just to make sure that I was okay. She did add more numbing cream, but of course, this like needles poking your brain, it, it hurt. It was a very uncomfortable feeling and it was very... As soon as I heard the the thing come on, I just immediately, I guess it was all in my head, but it was really painful. So 
So one thing that I'm super excited about now that I got the scalp micropigmentation is that I don't have to worry about using colored edges to fill in my hairline. I don't have to use um, any of those eyebrow pencils to fill in my hairline and I can just go about my life and it looks like my hair is fuller than what it is in my balding areas. And another good thing about this too is that a lot of people use hair fibers, but if you use hair fibers or the colored edges or even an eyebrow pencil, those kind of fade away as the day progresses. And if you're caught in the rain or the snow or you know in a hot and humid area, those kind of disappear, right? But the good thing about this is that it is a permanent alternative to that. And it's also a non-invasive alternative to having a hair transplant. So I know a lot of people on YouTube has been shaving their hairline off or their edges or their thinning temples and <laughs> I, that is not for me. Um, I've heard some horror stories. I've seen some terrible things about that method. So because I have now gotten the scalp micropigmentation, my hope is that my hair follicles do wake up from the procedure. In addition to that, of course, I'll be using minoxidil, which is basically Rogaine. I'll be using the extra strength men's Rogaine because that's stronger than the women's Rogaine. I'll also be taking my Vivisco hair vitamins, which I've already started. I've been taking those for about a month and I have noticed small growth um, on my hairline. And I'll also be using Jamaican black castor oil as well as this other oil that I received. I will um, have those listed somewhere down below because I forgot the name of it. Another question that I got is, will the ink fade? Yes. Over time, the dots do become less apparent. You will get about eight to 10 years out of your scalp micropigmentation treatment. If you have, I wanna say if you got three treatments done, you'll get like the full eight to 10 years, but me only having one treatment done, I'm not sure if it's gonna last for the full eight years. Of course, if you do notice that your scalp micropigmentation is fading, you can always go in for a touch up. So what tips do you have for someone thinking about getting the micropigmentation done? For one, take a pain reliever an hour before your session. Um, avoid going in the sun. Avoid being in direct sunlight. I have been outside within the last couple of weeks, but I have been wearing a sun hat or a hair bonnet. I also know that the sun can prematurely fade your micropigmentation, so you want to be very careful that you are, you know, covering that area with a hat, an umbrella, or something along those lines so that it doesn't prematurely fade away. The healing days after your procedure, you're not supposed to go in the pool, of course not to the beach, try to avoid sweating excessively, don't take hot showers, don't go to the gym because that's kind of like a breeding ground for germs. Your scalp is, not. I'm not gonna say your scalp is, your scalp is tender after the procedure for sure. Um, the day after I did have to take a Tylenol and I did have to just take it easy the day of, I definitely took a Tylenol, I took it easy that day and I just relaxed. Your scalp is definitely gonna be tender the first couple of days and I'm not gonna say you're gonna have an open wound but essentially it's a needle. It's a tattoo basically on your scalp so the same healing procedures that you would use for a tattoo on your body, you would have to keep in mind that you'll be using those. But because it's in your scalp, it gets kind of tricky. So the woman who did my procedure gave me a towel to take home and I basically just, when my scalp got oily or if I went outside for a short period of time and I felt like my scalp was getting dirty, I would just wet it and then I would take that towel and I would blot it dry. And I just made sure that I kept that area clean. I didn't put any products on it. And I did wait about I want to say I waited 10 days before I washed my hair. I know that some people say that you can wash it on the fourth day, the fifth day, but I wanted to make sure that I extended it as long as possible so that my scalp could fully heal before I, you know, went in and shampooed my hair. I did use baby shampoo the first time that I shampooed my hair and after shampooing, I was super excited to see the results of my scalp and it looked way more natural after the first shampoo. So what did it feel like? Um, it felt like a very large vibrational needle piercing my brain. That's what it felt like. I've never had any injuries to my scalp or my head. So that was definitely something very unique in itself. And it did hurt. I'm not going to lie and say it didn't. It kind of felt like needles sticking me in my brain. <laughs> that it, it was a really weird and uncomfortable uh, situation, but definitely worth it. 
How long was your scalp micropigmentation session? My session was one hour exactly. I got there at 10.30 and she was done by 11.30. And I like the fact that she, basically I'm, my hair here is very, very fine and my hair is balding here in this section. And she made sure to do the dots closer together here. That was my request. I wanted it closer together here and towards the front, I wanted her to spread them out. So that's exactly what she did and she gave me exactly what I was looking for. It's not the fullest look because I only had one session and I was in pain, although I tried to, you know, stick it out. My scalp was hurting, so she did kind of, you know, do her best and yeah. In the future, if I choose to get box braids, all I would have to do is put some concealer, a little bit of concealer in the areas that she did put the dots closer together. I may or may not have to use concealer there depending on how big the box braid is. But in that area, I'm completely bald anyway. So the chances of me having like some braids done or cornrows done or, you know, those types of hairstyles where my hair will have to be parted um, those, the chances of me having that done are slim until my hair grows in. Typically when I wear my hair out, I wear it in a low ponytail so that it can cover my area here. I'm not ever able to wear my hair like it is now without you like noticing that there's a huge missing patch here. So this is a hell of an upgrade from what I had before. So this concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you have any more questions, leave them down below in the comment section. If you want me to do an updated version of this video, um, let me know the questions that you want answered in that one. And I can't wait to see you all in my next video. I'll have some pictures and videos played after this so you guys can get a better look at my scalp and the before and after. And I can't wait to see you guys later. Bye guys. The only two things that I would change is that I would have her do smaller dots by using a needle that has a larger gauge that has tinier deposits of ink so that it could be kind of like an actual hair follicle. I feel like the size of needle that she used is kind of big, but it doesn't bother me that much because it does cover more surface area. And I would prefer her to do the dots a little further behind my hairline. But those were the only things that I would change. Other than that, I'm totally fine with the results completely. In some of these clips, the light is shining directly on my scalp and the lighting in the camera is also turned up high so that you can see the dots. But to the normal everyday eye, to the normal everyday person, it is not noticeable and you're not able to pinpoint that I've had the procedure done at all. And here is a clip of how my hairline is looking after the procedure. Um, after I got my hair cornrowed, huge difference, huge improvement. Before, my hairline used to start where that cornrow on the right side starts. It was completely empty, empty there. It looked like I had like a really big forehead because I didn't have any hair there. So huge improvement. Bezozai, yeah, that's right. It's Bezozai, ay, ay.